All right, so today our goal is to make a pull jam for free. Most of the time pull jams are welded. Um, not everybody has access to a welder, I understand that. So we're gonna show you how to make a weld this one. The frame will probably be metal. The surfaces that are grindable will be whatever we find out in the street. So it might be metal, maybe PVC, uh, who knows, we'll see what we find. I'm a big fan of pole jams because as I get older and as I get a little, little wider around the middle, right? I, I don't like to ollie as much. So that's curbs, pole jams, wallies. That's where it's at in my eyes. Yeah, pole jams are literally portable ollies. They, yeah. do, they do all the work for you. You don't have to pop your tail, it's great. Yeah, it's great. And then it puts you right into something and then people are like, whoa, that was sick. It was pole, like pole jam. It, people kind of think it's harder, but. But in reality, you're like, no, oh no, this is easier. Yeah, it's way easier. <laughs> like, this is my favorite rail. This is a flat bar. One of, our, one of our old welders, um, he just had some free time and he wasn't a skater, but he made this and he was like, hey, I bent the end of the flat bar into the ground. Is that cool? And I was like, that's actually really sick. Like really rad. Yeah. And what's crazy is like, he made it like the perfect melonist and like, yeah. uh, I don't know if you know this, I'm scared of pole jam rails, but I'll, I'll play with this one all day. Yeah, that bend is so nice. It's yeah, just it's like perfect. so inviting. You get on, you're into your grind, so it's great for just like ride on pole jam 50s, yeah. smiths. You can even like pole jam and then go like board slide and lift, whatever you want to call it. It's also fun to just grind and then pump down into yeah, it. Totally. So, so this rail is kind of what got me really excited about pole jams in general. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm really looking forward to this just because every pole jam is a little different, right? Like some are, some are waist high and really steep and really intimidating. Some are really mellow and playful. Some you can like nose nolly bonk off of. Some you're terrified of. So I'm gonna be curious to see like what kind of materials we can find. Ideally we want something probably like two feet or so to have enough time to get both trucks on. Yeah, good bash. Up. Yeah, because if it's too short, it turns into just like a back truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think that me sometimes mellower pole jams are scarier though because gravity is less forgiving. I feel like you're really feeling your weight on the rail, whereas a steep one, you kind of like, ba bonk. Yeah, yeah, it kind of elevates you more, right? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Bonks you off. What are we so, gonna need for this? So we're gonna build all this off site because we got compressors and CNC and saws running and music and all that. So we're gonna do this out in the streets somewhere. So um, I'm packing everything up in the truck. Uh, first off, we got our impact drill. Don't go anywhere without this. We got a regular drill and some bits in case we got to drill through anything. Always need a tape measure. Always need a good carpenter's pencil. Uh, then I just have like, you know, some miscellaneous screws and scissors and needle nose and things of that nature. We got our saw uh, because we're probably going to be cutting two by fours to make the frame of the pole jam. And then I also brought a cordless grinder. And this will be good because depending on the material that we find, we might need to cut it. And since pull jams go into the ground, we're probably gonna have to cut some weird angle so that it blends perfectly into the mm, ground. That's right. So got the grinder, got some extra um, cut wheels for it. So we got those. And I think that should be it. Um, I threw some two by fours in here. We just got a, a ramp back from a TV show that we did. Uh, they used a mini ramp for something that's going to come out in summer of 2022, so I can't say too much about it. Um, so, you know, there was just some miscellaneous 2x4s floating around that were used as extra supports and kickers. So I got a nice long one here, uh, just in case we find something crazy long and we want to go nuts. Oh, can you imagine doing like a three foot tall pole <laughs> yeah, jam? Just, ah! <laughs> the most aggressive jam. And then these ones are probably going to turn into, you know, different like supports or kickers or sides or maybe bases yeah that's so it just a few little two by fours um you could probably find these in the home depot dumpster like we have in our previous videos yeah you could take apart pallets to get this lumber um i got a little piece of plywood here based off of current plywood prices proportionally this is probably like a 30 dollar piece of wood yeah that's insane because <laughs> this piece brand new is like 90 right now it's ridiculous. So, yeah, this is, this is a hot commodity right here. So yeah, this we might hack up into some kind of cross member or base or something of the sort. So I got that um, and that's pretty much it. So now we're gonna jump in the truck. We're gonna go scour some 
dumpsters, we're gonna, well, all the businesses are open. Maybe like we find someone who is a fabricator and we just say, hey, you got scrap? Or we'll, we'll see what we get into. Oh, what's all that? They got stuff, whatever they are. Yeah, what are they? They're receiving and shipping of something. Um, I mean, it doesn't really look like they have a zone of trash that's accessible to us. So we'll, we'll keep looking. Maybe on the sidewalk nearby, they leave something else, huh? But th this area will be good because it's all, it's all industrial over here. So, I mean like, like that. Yeah. That, that looks like some trash or maybe it's a hoarder. Yeah, we got dumpsters. It's perfect because uh, today's trash day over here. The hard part with metal, usually the metal gets scooped up by the, the scrap guys. Yeah. Oh, this alley looks promising. Oh, the, this alley has that angle iron has ledge. A ledge. Maybe we just take the angle iron. Oh man, Dale just, would kill himself. Just ruin the spot. <laughs> Dale would be so sad. Dale loves this ledge. I wonder if they, maybe they'll have like a scrap piece of a car that yeah. you could like make a pole jam out of. You're gonna, you're gonna go talk I'll, to the I'll guys here? I'm gonna go in and be like, hey, do you have anything around two or three foot that's metal that you would be willing to give to me? You'd be surprised on how much material we've gotten by just doing this. <laughs> like when I was a kid, like me and all my friends, we would just like ask like the, the places that were like building houses and stuff for spare wood. And a lot of times they just like give you stuff. The homie. So what is it? I don't know why they have this, but it's like a like a channel. Oh, that's thick. It almost looks like you could just fit a two by four in here. It's pretty long though. But I mean, we could cut it, or maybe we just use the whole thing. But this is major score. I was gonna say that'd be really hard to cut. Yeah, it's very heavy. You could maybe make like a super mellow pole jam out of it, since it's like fat yeah, square. Like <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking how funny would it be if like if you go and they're like, I need scrap metal and they have like a perfect triangle like for whatever reason like already laid out. It's like, oh yeah, here you go. It's all pristine. <laughs> they have an element pole jam rainbow reel in there for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, so just for some uh, some scenery, I feel like we should just build it right here. I mean, they, they got good ground. There's never anyone at this skate park. Most empty park ever. And uh, you know, it'll give us a, a place to kind of roll around and get our get our legs warm before we start jamming. Got our new workshop, a handbar court. Kind of secluded, we don't have all the wind. I'm just gonna do one cut on the bottom. Like I'll have to do a cut kind of like this. Oh, to make it flush with the ground. Yeah, make that flush. And then we'll just have it be a long, mellow guy. And then I grabbed this kind of last minute before we left the shop. It's a cutoff of some um, recycled plastic. So I just thought it'd be cool to kind of mix up materials. You know, oh yeah. Metal side, have our like soft side. I'm thinking this will be like the uh, the aggressive kind of more jammy. Side. Oh yeah. So we'll have this kind of something like that. Ooh, I'm not the dude for this, but imagine like a pull jam to like nose grind. Oh, that would be sick. That would be really. I was thinking like pull jam up rock and then kind of pop in mm -hmm. or. Or how about a uh, Pole Jam 180 Switch 50? We're gonna fantasize about so many tricks that you're not gonna get the six. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably just do like the ride on 50. I mean, we're just gonna skate over it sideways, just ollie over it. <laughs> so here's a nice little trick. Instead of guessing, I'm gonna figure out where I like my angle. And then with this two by four, since it's parallel with the ground and this needs to go in the ground, if I do that, that's what I want, right? That's my cut. Oh, there you go. With the grinders, uh, eye protection, crucial. You don't want to get little shards of metal in your eyeball. If you take anything away from this video, let it be that. Don't have a guard on here. These usually come with a guard, um, but the problem with them is a lot of times it kind of gets in your way of like, you know, more intri intricate cuts and stuff. So I'm going no guard. It's not advised, but sometimes you have to do it. Um, okay, so now we're gonna wanna do a, a perpendicular line this way. Make that cut. Thing. To match the other side, I'm just gonna measure from here. So it looks like six and a half. So I'm gonna mark six and a half right there. And you just connect the lines. Yeah, and I should just be able to connect that.
<laughs> I was really hoping I could get it out of one. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's nice. I love it. Very flush. Oh, yeah. Oh, cut the corners off so this yeah. thing sits flush in. Yep. Oh, yeah, look at that. Is it fitting in now? Very nice. Oh, snug as a bug in a rug. You know the history of the pole jam? You know why they're called pole jams? You know you started it? I have no idea. So Ricky Oyola did one that's at the spot in Philly, and for a long time they were just called Philly Jams. Really? Yeah, and then people started doing them on the West Coast because like all great things, it starts on the East Coast, and uh, they started calling them pole jams. That's really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's in Eastern Exposure is the first clip of someone doing it. It's like, I've, I've done a pole jam on the original pole jam. It's no. gone now, they fixed it. But it's like at this, uh, I almost want to say it was like a uh, under a bridge basketball court, but maybe not. It's under a bridge. It was just a real thick black one. It was pretty steep. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I saw Jenkum did this thing uh, the other the day. Eurogap. The Eurogap. The mini dock on the Eurogap. Yeah. Street. Yeah, so that was cool. sick. Yeah, I was stoked I on the Euro. Love yeah. That. I love shit like that. I'm going to cut this to be the backer for here. So that's there. And then this is our pretend ground. Okay, so same kind of thing. I gotta, I gotta kind of shave off the end of this to fit in there. And this two by four will give you the angle you need to cut the bottom. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna find that angle. We're gonna using the angle finder, like that. Look down the barrel, right there. I'm gonna lock it in place. What's our angle? It's about right, like 27 degrees, a little shy of uh, 30. All right, so some little countersinks. I'm gonna do them every like, I don't know, just eyeball like eight inches or so. He's countersinking so when he puts the screws in, it doesn't what, split it or uh, make so an awkward sits, hole. So the head sits flush, so it has like a little, a little cone to sit in. Oh yeah, yeah, so and you won't catch it. You're never gonna catch them on your trucks. This is gonna go here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do some holes and countersinks through there so that bites that. But that's only two screws that we're gonna rely on. So I think if I put this here, now I could bite it that way with the wood on top of being able to go boom, boom. So now I've kind of stiffened the whole thing up and I've made a nice little triangle. I'm going to pre-drill through there. Get rid of that countersink. Why are you pre-drilling it? Uh, just because it's going through so much. Yeah. Like it has a lot to... Ooh, it's not even going to grab. Or I could toenail. Toenail is like a diagonal like that. So I might have to, might have to do a little toenail in here. I'm gonna do some uh, counter sinks to attach. I'm gonna do one here, nice long guy into that. And then I think I'm gonna do one here and one down here. Drilling into metal, very important to have good bits. This is a cobalt bit, which is very strong metal. A lot of times the, the ones you get at Home Depot don't really uh, cut it so yeah, and the tips will break too and you're drilling for an hour and wonder why nothing's happening yep. Yeah, when you're drilling you want this That's the sign of a shark bit. Yeah, if you're getting one solid piece of metal. Oh, yeah, you're stoked We're gonna countersink these So those screw heads sit flush off just uh when we're handling it I'm yeah reaching underneath that to there it's getting cut right there how's 
is that wedging in there? Yeah. Is that flush? Yeah, that's solid. Do something like this that tacks there. Yeah, let's go 10 inch. So many like screws and random things just sticking out. You get what you pay for, Corey. <laughs> For some reason, that angle and the way that you're screwing into it makes me think of going to the dentist <laughs> and like getting, getting that sweet, sweet Novocaine. Little helpful trick on a toenail. Start straight in, then go. Now, assuming you're not gonna find this piece of metal that fits a two by four in it halfway decently, and you're gonna be doing this out of two by fours. That just means that you're not gonna to have to do as much countersinking. It'd be probably easy to put like pieces of angle iron on the side of it. Oh yeah. Like find two pieces of angle iron. If you get that out of a bed frame or whatever, you just screw that onto the side or liquid nail it or whatever you, makes yeah, it easier. Doubled up angle iron, PVC. You could do like a shotgun PVC style. Oh, that would be sick. That would be cool. Um, or you could just do a, you could do a single PVC actually. Yeah, just one. Yep, and then screw into the bottom of it. What I like about the tutorials that we end up doing is you never like build the ramps and like the like you, like I feel like you try to show as many different techniques throughout the entire like design as you possibly can. Like all these like angles and stuff that you're cutting and showing how to get them, I think it's like so sick. Like you probably could rig up like a two by four and like a weird thing on top of it and have it be real crappy. But learning all these like little techniques, you could also use in other ramps. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's going to be crude and guessworky. And then other times you can, you know, bust out some angle finders and squares and, and get it just perfect. Yeah. Tack it there. And then maybe just for aesthetics, we could cut that off. That kind of looks better anyways, having it lower. Yeah, I like going it. Going all the way to the top. It has almost like a fifth dimension shape weird design. <laughs> like someone put, tried to put a triangle in a triangle in a triangle. Nice little preset. something right here Since oh yeah know, just we connect everything those and that's kind of like a a weird little joining of, of two by fours on edge yeah i'm gonna throw something like right there basically anytime you tail something you kind of want an extra support somewhere involved you think yeah definitely putting her all together oh yeah she's sturdy she ain't going nowhere wow wow are you guys taking the skate park out of here? Oh, I think you're gonna do a first try. Good what's, luck not having wax. What's first? Mellow side, no wax, full Mellow sand. Mellow side, I can't even like rub the, the wax that's on my trucks on it. You can, as you grind it for the first time. Very gritty. Is it? Yeah. It seems like it wants to go. Oh yeah. Oh, that was good. You got it. You could have landed that. Woo! Jam you gonna jam 180 it? Or should I try slower? Jam in? I wanna see jam in. Oh, oh was that scary? Nolly grinder? It's a handrail. I like the dimensions of it. I like that one side's steep and one side's mellow. Ooh. Okay, we, get, we got a flat gap here. Uh, the question is, what sham are you gonna use? Steepy or? Sh I think this 
Okay. Okay, let's see it. Woo! First go? Need a bigger gap. Yeah, right? What, what else you got? Uh, Wait, you want to try to do the bigger one? This one's kind of beefy. Okay, let's do the bigger one. Yeah, I think... Alright. We go right here. You're going to go uphill? Yeah, I should go this way, huh? You might be wondering yourself, what else can you do with a pole jam besides pole jam? And like we said before, what we like about it is it's pretty much a replacement to Ollie. Like if you want to get into a grind on a ledge, you can put a pole jam before it. Like if you put it at this angle, you could probably pole jam to 50-50 on this if that crack wasn't so ridiculously terrible and if it actually had a decent run up. Uh, we, he's, he's a pretty busy guy today, so we don't really have time to go zip around and set this pole jam in a bunch of different locations, but it really does work like an ollie. You can pole jam into a, you know, over the spine into the other side or onto a wall ride. There's a million different variations for it. Or uh, another good one if you take it to a skate park and there's just like a good bank or a pyramid. Oh yeah. Find something that kind of matches this angle. Or right? slightly under it. Yeah, yeah, because then it's just like even more gradual. Yeah. And then it's just assisting you straight onto it. And then it's gonna feel really cool to just float off of that. Yeah. Especially if you have a pyramid, you know? Like we wanted to do it, there's a pyramid here, but they're doing construction on it right now. So it would have been a cool idea to pull jam over the pyramid, but. Yeah, yeah, off the pyramid or even like, we could put it to the flat bar, you know? Like yeah, pull jam, jam up to grind. To slide, pull jam to grind on the flat bar. Yep. So it'd be good for that. Uh, maybe we'll do a, a follow-up video where we just try to get weird with this one. Yeah, hey, I'm super down because I want to do a tutorial on how to pull jam because there's like yeah. little tricks and strategies to make it a whole lot easier on yourself than just kind of winging it. Yeah. Pull jam downstairs, pull jam upstairs. Pull jam, pull jam. Pole jam, pole jam. Pole yep. jam, pole jam, pole jam. Pole jam, pole jam, pole jam, pole jam. You can also power slide before the pole jam and board slide up it. <laughs> hope you enjoyed it uh leave a comment on what maybe you want us to do next another free obstacle we do have some in mind coming up that you've already requested so be ready for those okay, what, do, what do we got as of now we did the box we yep. did the free rail uh we did the kicker. kicker i mean we could do wedge but it's the same as the kicker I feel yeah like that's a waste of everybody's time uh i mean then you get into like spine and quarter pipe and mini ramp yeah i, I, feel, I feel like we, we'll do something weird next time but uh if you want to actually purchase a ramp that is actually professionally built to skate caneramps.com is a great place to do that we have everything from mini ramps to quarter pipes to rails to ledges some funky stuff anything you can imagine that you would see at a skate park we probably make uh for a reasonable price and it's designed by actual skateboarders so uh hit the link in the description or just type in keenramps.com thanks for watching yeah do it no, no. And full disclaimer, I'm not normally a slob. I spilled coffee this morning. I was trying to be fresh with the white tea. Do it. Uh, is it, is it this one? I forgot. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs>